I found it on Rayma Radio. You're listening to the 100th episode of Rayma Radio. 100. More than 100 hours of audio content. That's 100 interviews, 100 sermons and 200 songs. You know, when we first started this journey two years ago, we never knew where this journey would take us. We started as a lean team of four, Moses, Veronica, Adeline and myself. And in the following months, the family grew with the addition of Jonathan, Sandy, Joel. We had two big goals. One, Rema Radio was to be the resource center of positive, faith-inspired content, a digital warehouse for sermons, stories, and songs, a bit like Joseph's warehouse in Genesis 41. And secondly, a kingdom-minded platform for unity, to show love to one another, what Jesus shared in John 13 verse 35. This was partly reflected by the diverse, talented hosts from churches all across the Klang Valley. Doreen Tang, Julia Pong, Ray Poon, Ruhan, Sheila Singham, Victor Chua, and Victoria Ong. Every single one of them representing a slightly different voice, but united in the faith. We don't know what the next 100 shows has in store, but we count it a real privilege and joy to be the voices that journey with you in faith, in culture, music, and more. Congratulations, Radio Rima, on your 100th episode. Well done, guys. Keep up the good work. And I just want to encourage all you all that Rima Radio has really been a blessing. I look forward to the awesome programs, interviews, and also sermons. Keep up the good job and really looking forward to many more programs to come. Warmest regards from Susan from SIB Likas in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. Hi everyone, I'm Victor Chua from FGA KL. Now, I've been a host with Rima Radio since day one, and I can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of this amazing ministry. Congratulations to everyone involved in Rema, from the Board of Trustees to Jason to Moses, all the hosts, including myself of course, on making it to the 100th episode. Here's to many hundreds more to come. God bless. Hi, I'm Daniel. And I'm Marian. And, and we, we are, are from St. Mary's Cathedral. Cathedral. I'm also a youth ministry worker with Scripture Union Peninsula, Malaysia. We want to congratulate Rema Radio on reaching the 100th episode with over 50,000 plays. And we want to thank the ministry team for seeking to bring good and relevant content as well as highlighting the issues impacting the Christian community here in Malaysia. May God continue to bless Rema Radio as you seek to encourage and enrich the body of Christ here in Malaysia. Thank, thank you, you Rema Radio. Radio! Hey friends, this week's midweek service sermon was from Kenneth Chin, shared at X Church, entitled Growing in Capacity. Listen to that and other sermons at remarad.io or anywhere else you get your podcasts. And now, for this week's interview. Hi, you're listening to Rema Radio, the weekly podcast on faith, culture, music and more. This is Jason. I'm Julia. And in the studio with us is an avid runner, a movie reviewer, uh, and also so happens to be the Deputy Minister of International Trade and Industry, Yang Bohomat Dr. Ong Kian Ming. Welcome to the studio, Dr. Ong. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Right. So right now, we want to talk about uh, nation building and the church's place in nation building. Mm. So um, perhaps maybe just uh, to, to kick off uh, this conversation, um, where do you attend and where do you... Yeah, my home church is... Uh, my home church is uh, a church called uh, Pantai Baptist Church. Uh, it used to be called First Baptist Church uh, in PJ. Uh, this was uh, I didn't grow up in a Christian family. Uh, my my parents are not Christian, uh, and uh, I started attending church when uh, I accepted Christ uh, when I was studying in Singapore. And uh, when I came back, uh, the closest church to my uh, house in uh, Jalan Gasing was actually uh, um, First Baptist Church. Uh, and I had a few family members who were attending that church, so I decided to go there, and uh, that was my home church. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm still a registered member of that church, although I've uh, I've since moved away physically to Serdang. Uh, and I like I said in an earlier interview, uh, time uh, you know does not permit me to regularly attend my home church anymore. Understandably, yeah. yeah. So how long ago was this that you? Uh became a Christian? Oh, uh, I accepted Christ when I was uh, 18. 18. Yeah, uh, in Singapore. Yeah, and uh, uh, I think my my period of growth as a Christian was uh, definitely when I was studying in the UK uh, where I got the opportunity to learn more about how to read and understand the Bible, uh, expository teaching, a lot of good fellowship, uh, you know, with uh, other like-minded uh, Christians who were very... Um, 
uh, gang ho at that time, you know, young and gang ho Christians. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, very my formative years. Uh, I think as a, as a Christian. Now, uh, you know, we we are definitely depending on the base that we've built. Uh, you know, in our younger days, uh, because these times, uh, as a elected member of uh, parliament and also deputy minister, there's uh, probably a less time for us to less time for me to engage with, uh, you know, the the same kind of. Uh, uh, Christian friends as I used to mm. engage with in mm. the past. Yeah. Mm. And probably, I think the hope is that, I mean, those early formative years were um, strong and deep enough, the roots were strong and deep enough that, that carries you through I would like to think season. so. I would like to think so. And especially in terms of thinking about different issues uh, uh, that uh, are important or, uh, or relevant to the Christian community uh, from a public policy perspective, perspective especially. Um, I think really that um, as a person being in your position, uh, different people have different uh, stance in being vocal about their faith and whether they should come out and say it. Some is undercover, you know, but I'm glad, you know, that and for many years, I think the churches have been praying for uh, godly men or, or right standing um, upstanding leaders. Men and upstanding women. leaders. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And we're glad that, uh, I mean, we see uh, more, and more. More, more and more of that in, in the current government mm. yeah including many of my colleagues you know i think hannah yo of course has uh, uh you know um, written a book about her journey uh, of course she has also been uh, publicly attacked yeah. uh, but i think god has been faithful she's been uh, protected and many people can see that she's a uh, uh, you know christian politician that is fighting for the rights of uh, all malaysians uh, regardless of uh, uh, faith yeah. i think speaking about that um i think even non-christians can see that that was rather below the belt because the, 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 the book was released much earlier and it was brought True. the issue was brought up much later yes. and and the person that came up with that whole story even after G14 she the the the, 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 the narrator or whatsoever that came mm-hmm. up with this scandal came out and said that she was paid to, 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 to do, do that yeah. yes 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 she basically came up to say that you know it was a whole <coughs> cyber uh, trooper something yeah. like that yeah. 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 yeah but Malaysians may not understand that uh, I, I think that as politicians we always have to be ready uh, especially in this day and age of social media that uh, some of our statements will be taken out of context and, and used to attack us uh, I've been subject uh, of that uh, as well although you know less uh, uh, on a lower level compared to what Hannah had to go through. Uh, so as long as I think we can defend our own record uh, and uh, we have, uh, you know, people, people I think, who are level-minded, who are rational, uh, including a majority of the voters, they tend to look at your own record on a more longer-term basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if, let's say, for example, people try to attribute racist statements to you or, let's say, to me, uh, others would stand stand up to defend me because they know that I don't have this kind of record of uh, uh, speaking, uh, you know, from a very racially prejudiced uh, point of view or religiously prejudiced kind of view. So, um, you know, we have to stand by our own record, and uh, ultimately, I think the people uh, will be uh, proper judges of that. Mm. It's true that the climate is such that anything said can be weaponized. Anything said can be taken out of context, and uh, that's the climate we live in today. And with the, the, with the you know, the thing of fake news. Yeah, sure. Even this podcast, you know, I mean, people can take uh, certain excerpts of what I've yeah. said and then uh, they can, you know, uh, edit it and then uh, use it to attack me for whatever reason. But Create a meme out of it. Uh, yes, of course, yeah. So, but, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, the in, in the longer term, I think uh, the, the voters are more discerning and uh, I think the election results in G14 are uh, bought that out. Yeah, but I want to say, I do want to say thank you for sp- taking your time out to, to be here. And uh, But yeah, it's true. Some people may be so scared to even... Uh, say something that they don't say it at all and which is which is uh, <coughs> unfortunate yeah I think one has to be discerning uh, you know uh, this is probably the most uh, important uh, skill set uh, that a politician uh, needs to have in terms of being able to discern what to say and what not to say who to meet and who not to meet uh, what to do and what not to do so you know um, this is something that we continue to learn and refine along the way mm. in other words we pass the test Jason <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, let's talk about uh, challenges in, in governing. Um, it's a very obvious question. Are Indeed. there challenges <laughs> in governing? Yeah. <laughs> um, rather, what are they? <clears throat> okay, uh, maybe I can break it down in a couple of uh, different uh, ways. Uh, of course, the biggest challenge now is that, um, let's say, in, in most states, uh, the, the Pakatan Harapan uh, you know, uh, coalition is in power at both federal and uh, national levels so it's not no longer possible for us to blame anyone else uh, 
uh, except for ourselves. Uh, so, you know, that's, that is a responsibility that we need to have uh, and to embrace. Uh, but at the same time, we are cognizant of the challenges. Uh, for example, uh, you know, in any group of people uh, coming together, there will be differences of opinion. Uh, including, of course, politicians coming from uh, number one, different parties, and then number two, different uh, backgrounds and uh, different faith persuasions and race. Uh, so, coming together in a new coalition uh, for the first time, uh, you know, we've that been ruled by a coalition other than the BN, there's bound to be an uh, adjustment period of getting to know one another, getting to see what are the uh, areas in which uh, it's easier for us to push ahead uh, at the federal level and then what areas to hold back. Uh, and then, I think there's also the challenges of trying to explain uh, some of our policies to the larger public because the public have very high expectations of us and I think that's good to have. That keeps us accountable. But at the same time, there are things that you know we uh, can't do in the short term uh, that we are trying to do in the long term but we uh, you know, will have to uh, take uh, you know, a couple of uh, stages to unveil our plans uh, on uh, various uh, manifesto-related promises. So I think that that's also another challenge, trying to let people know that, look, we have your interest in mind, just give us a bit of time. Uh, and uh, I think it's a balancing act between asking for more time and then at the same time trying to deliver as much as we can. But I think we, we have had a decent record so far in the last uh, uh, few months of uh, governing, four or five months of governing. Uh, you can see uh, in the midterm review of the 11th Malaysia Plan, the Prime Minister outlined certain things that we've already done, uh, such as... Uh, you know, Prime Minister not holding the portfolio of a finance minister. He mm. emphasized that one. Yeah. the Prime Minister should not have any portfolio. You know, we talked about, uh, he talked about lowering the minimum age of voting to 18. Uh, talked about, and now we're in the process of reforming various government institutions, including the Election Commission, uh, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, the uh, Election Commission, you know. So we do have a full plate uh, ahead of us, but you can, I think the Raya can see that you are much more sincere and much more willing to tackle the tricky issues uh, that perhaps the, definitely, sorry, the previous government was not, uh, was not uh, willing to tackle. You brought up something just now about, you know, various parties coming out together, right? Is there, I'm just wondering, is there any pressure to conform to the party line regardless of your personal conviction? And if you've come across such a situation, how did you handle it? Mm, I, I think as members of any political party, we should, uh, uh, you know, follow the guidance that uh, our leaders give to us. That's why I said, uh, you know, earlier that we must join a party that uh, whose principles and also leadership we believe in. Uh, so that, um, you know, most of the time you'll be able to agree with uh, the decisions that's made by the party. Um, you know, recently my party came out with a very strong statement to say that active politicians in DAP should not accept any awards of uh, titles, Dato, Dato Sri's and all that. Uh, and I think this is something that I personally agree with. Uh, some of my uh, colleagues, other colleagues may find this decision a little bit harsh, uh, but, you know, it's a principle that uh, my party has been holding for quite some time already and we continue to hold that position. Uh, so, you know, on, on this particular point, uh, I think, uh, you know, I uh, I fully agree with the party. There have been probably one instance I can think of whereby uh, I've uh, been asked to uh, vote on a particular issue in ways in which I was 50-50 about. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, uh, relation to a trade-related uh, matter. It's very technical. Uh, so I think the larger public, uh, you know, and even people within my party probably didn't uh, catch hold of it, but some of my closer colleagues in, uh, in, in the party knew of my particular position. Uh, but I, I, I think in a larger scheme of things, this wasn't that important. As long as I think the, the direction of the party uh, is correct, uh, you know, and it has been so far, I, I don't, don't see ma many major problems with us of wanting to conform. And if let's say we do not agree, I think there's always creative ways in which we can come out to uh, give a somewhat uh, a different point of view without, um, without uh, you know, in a very constructive way. Uh, I've not had the opportunity to do that yet, but, uh, you know, I've, uh, in terms of my own party's positions, but I think in terms of what some, in terms of what uh, the Prime Minister has said, I've come up with certain clarification statements on my own, of, of my own, which um, some people have interpreted to say that I disagree with the Prime Minister. That's, that's not really the case. I'm just trying to clarify a little bit more on what uh, he said on, on some issues. 
You've been listening to YB Dr. Ong Kian Ming and when we come back, we'll talk more about uh, the church's role and uh, Christian community's role in nation building. Okay, nama saya adalah Victor. Saya adalah pastor daripada gereja SIB Jalan Aman, Sandakan, Sabah. Ada satu ayat yang sentiasa menjadi berkat kepada saya dan sentiasa mendorong saya dan menjadi satu guide dalam hidup saya. Itu adalah petikan daripada Zechariah 4 ayat 6 yang berbunyi seperti ini. Maka berbicaralah dia, katanya, Inilah firman Tuhan kepada Zerubabel. Bunyinya, Bukan dengan keperkasaan dan bukan dengan kekuatan, Melainkan dengan rohku firman Tuhan semesta Saya berharap bahawa uh, ayat ini akan menjadi satu berkat dan dorongan kepada kamu semua hari ini Supaya kamu semua dipimpin oleh roh kudus dan sentiasa bersandar kepada kuasanya Hi Jason, this is your past speaking Praise the Lord for His grace and faithfulness in enabling Rema Radio to achieve the 100 episode I'm so thankful to God for you and is so proud of you. May the good Lord continue to bless you and your team in Rema Radio. God bless. Congratulations, Rema Radio, on your 100th episode. What a blessing to be able to do what you're doing and to reach so many others with the message of hope. God bless and keep going. This is Pastor Sandra from X Church KL. Hi, my name is Enoch. I serve in Shiloh Assembly of God, Wang Samaju. Congratulations, Rima, on your 100th episode. I thank you for being there, for being, for diligently serving and daring to sow in this nascent digital space. I've benefited so much from the broad topics and issues and even have used it as material for my own engagement in the church. Bless you and to many more episodes and to many new frontiers that you will conquer. Many congratulations, Rima Radio, on your upcoming 100th episode. My name is Malcolm Tan. I'm from Singapore. And from time to time, I listen to the podcast. Uh, keep up the good work. I just want to say I benefited from it. God bless you all. Uh, and Shalom. Hello, 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 hello to Rima Radio. Congratulations for your 100 sessions. Wow. Um, thank you for all your encouraging message. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that leads you all on for all, for all these years. Well, greetings from me, Manto. May you have another thousands and thousands and thousands more shows to go. God bless you all. Jason and your team, keep it up. Red, my radio. Welcome back to Rima Radio, the weekly podcast on faith, culture, music and more. Jason and Julia here. Hello. And uh, in the studio, we are talking to YB, Dr. Ong Kian Ming. And right now, we want to talk about the church and the Christian community and how we can be playing a more uh, proactive or strategic role in nation building. What's your thought about this? <coughs> okay, uh, let me start off at, at the local level first uh, because I think this is where, uh, again, you know, drilling down to uh, you know the, the ground up level. Uh, I think there are many things that the Christian community can do in terms of uh, bridge building. Uh, I've seen this happen uh, in uh, some churches whereby they reach out to uh, members uh, of different faith groups uh, to do certain activities together, uh, whether it's uh, interfaith gatherings or even doing things like gotong royongs and whatnot. And I think this is a very good start because uh, we don't want to be trapped in our own silos yeah. because you know we are not talking about uh, nation building for a particular community or a faith uh, alone. We're talking about uh, building uh, the nation for everyone. Yeah, for Malaysians. Uh, for uh, for you know. So uh, one thing I think uh, I would uh, encourage more church, uh, more churches as well as Christian leaders to uh, you know take a more proactive role in is uh, doing uh, you know interfaith dialogues or just um, you know gatherings with our Muslim friends. Uh, this is something which I think many Christians shy away from uh, for various reasons. I think some of which are, I think, uh, understandable. 
you know, for example, they may not know many Muslim friends uh, that they are close to at the community level. Uh, they may not have had the chance to uh, reach out to, for example, uh, the leaders of surahs and uh, masjids. Uh, and of course, it takes two to, to tango yeah. because I think sometimes uh, uh, the religious leaders from other faiths, uh, including uh, you know the, our Muslim friends, they may not know how to reach out to uh, leaders from other faith communities as well. Uh, at the national level, I think there is some uh, there is some sort of like unofficial contact, but I think at the local level, this is where we can uh, have much more meaningful interactions because you can do it uh, on a much more informal basis. There can be uh, less protocol. So, for example, I participated in these kinds of uh, interfaith uh, buka puasa events uh, in a couple of uh, mosques in my area, uh, and uh, I myself personally, I try to reach out to my uh, Muslim voters by. Uh, fasting with them during the fasting month. I did it for the first two years uh, when I was member of parliament for Serdang. Uh, it's a good exercise. I lose a, I lose a little bit of weight uh, in the process. <laughs> Not as well. that you need to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Looking I at you, need to la. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I know, and and it's uh, it makes the the process of um, fasting much more meaningful as well. Uh, you know, Christians are taught to to pray and fast. Uh, you know, we probably do it less than we should, uh, and. Yeah, so this is one very tangible way in which we can contribute to the nation-building process from the ground-up level. I think I, I agree that completely that we need more common grounds because it's through this uh, interaction and doing life together is where, is where we understand each other better and from knowing and understanding each other better, more respect and, and, and reciprocal, unity. you know, unity. So, um, yeah, I think, I think <coughs> there's definitely something that uh, Christians can do more. Uh, do you think it should be initiated from the church leadership itself or church events or I mean how do you yeah, know about that? Uh, you know like I said uh, it takes everyone to tango <laughs> mm. it takes two to tango uh, if let's say there are some church leaders who want to initiate something like this but they don't know how uh, they can always approach uh, me uh, or any of my other colleagues you know because we as politicians we uh, meet uh, voters from all faith backgrounds so we know uh, leaders from uh, the churches, the the mosques, the temples, and whatnot. So uh, we would be in a good position to link people up and to organize uh, these events in conjunction or together with many of these uh, faith uh, faith leaders at the local level. Uh, but if let's say they want to initiate something on their own to reach out, I think that's fine as well. Uh, you know, we are always ready to be facilitators. Uh, if let's say they want to do something on their own and then invite uh, elected reps to come and be part and parcel of that process, I think all of us would be more than happy to to come and participate. That's really, really encouraging and good to hear. Yeah, maybe maybe if you're a pastor and you're listening to this, something to consider moving forward when you're talking about your plans, maybe this to the rest of this year or next year, um, something to do to, to, towards nation building, a bit more intentional in uh, showing love to our neighbours. Yeah. And can I chip in, especially for the younger generation who are even much more in their silos now than they were in the past, mm-hmm. you know, I would think that these um, initiatives would count for a lot going yeah. forward. Uh, just a note of caution, I think uh, because some of these events, they can be uh, sometimes, uh, again, uh, spun out of context uh, by in social media. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it would be good uh, to, for it to be a more deliberative process so that uh, you find the right settings at the local levels in which you can have this kind of meaningful uh, engagements in a way that is uh, respectful of all, uh, all the, the, the people involved. Hmm. And um, from my personal uh, experience is that post-G14, I feel uh, my, uh, t- talking about Malays now, mm-hmm. they, they, on the street, they are more, I think they're, they're more intentional in building bridges. They like they were like assuring, say, hey, you know, we, we didn't stand with the previous way of things and this is a new way in Malaysia Baru. And uh, there's more intentional uh, steps taken on the ground level just connecting and, and, and just making conversations. And I do feel that myself. And I feel that as Christians as well, we should uh, be more intentional to uh, show love and care wherever we can and, and not, uh, you know, the word that is that's repeating now is of silos. Huh? So let's mm. not just look into our own way of things, but let's open our eyes and look and engage more. Yeah, definitely. Rema Radio. Hi, my name is Soyen. I go to Living Waters Missions Baptist Church. Uh, I would just like to pray for uh, the topic that's close to my heart. Heavenly Father, I thank you that um, you are constantly um, looking out for us. Uh, I want to just lift up um, all the children um, in Malaysia, Lord, 
especially those who are underprivileged and don't see hope. I pray, Lord, that you will、um, allow your people to be the one who carry that light to them、um, through various means,、um, teaching them how to read, giving them、uh, means of getting work or food, Lord. We pray that、um, they will be able to. Um, see you as a God of love, and that they will find hope in you. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah. Hello, this is Fike, the Mr. Bean impersonator of Malaysia. I just want to wish you Rema Radio. Congratulations, you made it to your hundredth. Hun, hun, hard to say. Hundredth, hundredth, hundredth episode! Whoo! What an achievement! Congratulations, guys and the team! You are amazing! Hi, this is Frida Liu. Congratulations on the hundredth episode! All glory to God! And secondly, for the hard work、uh, that the Rayma Radio team has been putting into this,、um, we continue to look forward to the two hundredth episode, and、uh, you know, looking for greater things to come. Congratulations once again! Hi, Rayma Radio. This is、uh, Pastor Kichuan from SIB Likas and also Jubilee Hostel in.、Uh, Tambulion Sabah. I'm so glad to know that you are approaching 100th episode, and that's great. Rema Radio is so important to Malaysia because I think it fulfills a, a gap, a need here.、Uh, we can get a lot of messages from、uh, from other countries in the internet, but news about Malaysia, news about the work of、uh, of Christians here. In Malaysia, is very lacking, and so it's great that、uh, you are fulfilling this great need. So well done! Keep up the good work. Continue to、uh, bring this message across the airs, and I pray that、uh, all Christians will help you all move towards this great need and help fulfill it in Malaysia. Let's bring the word out for Rema Radio to move on beyond 100 episodes and more. Amen. Hi, I'm Shawin. First of all, congratulations to Rema Radio for achieving this milestone. Continue to stay strong for Jesus. Take care. Rema Radio. Welcome back to Rema Radio, the weekly podcast on faith, culture, music, and more. Jason and Julia here talking with YB Doctor Ong Kian Ming. So before the break, we talked about、uh, practical steps the church can take in nation building. Uh, any other thoughts about this? Yeah,、uh, so I talked about how you know churches can play a role in terms of outreach at the、uh, at the local community level to other faith groups, you know, to have a better understanding of each other.、Uh, but at the same time, there's also、uh, you know、uh, you know what churches can do on a more、uh, national kind of basis.、Uh, and in terms of nation building and politics, has always been a sensitive、uh, and uh, tricky balancing act.、Uh, there are some churches in the past. Uh, who would stay away completely from politics,、uh, talking about nation building issues because they deem it to be very sensitive,、uh, understandably、uh, so. You know, since some churches were sort of like、uh, labelled as、um, uh, you know churches that were involved in、uh, quote unquote seditious activities in the past, pastors have been arrested and、uh, detained and whatnot. So,、uh, you know, some churches have taken that that、uh, that line.、Uh, other churches、uh, have come out, you know, quite strongly to make their positions.、Uh, Very public,、uh, to say say that you know they they stand、uh, against corruption, against abuse of power. You know,、uh, I think these churches are probably a little bit more、uh, small in number compared to the the first category, uh, and um, uh, you know I I think、uh, that was something that was encouraging、uh, to many of us,、uh, you know, before GE fourteen.、Uh, but now moving forward, I think the 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 tricky balancing act would be、uh, for churches who came out very strongly. I think on.、Uh, On those are national issues,、uh, you know.、Uh, they should also continue to be、uh, to make sure that they keep the new government accountable, since、uh, many ma- many people in the new government, including people like myself, my colleagues Hannah Yeo,、uh, and and others,、uh, you know, we、uh, have a much more closer relationship with many of these、uh, more outspoken church leaders.、Uh, so they、uh, should not. Uh, 
you know, lose sight of the fact that they, just like as they called out the previous government, uh, you know, in terms of accountability, they should also do the same for us. For those other churches that perhaps, uh, you know, feel that they are not equipped to come out to speak on nation building issues, especially on sensitive political topics like corruption and whatnot, maybe start smaller, you know, just to uh, uh, have activities such as, uh, you know, a National Day celebration, uh, you know, to make sure that people are aware of... Uh, uh, their rights as Malaysians, uh, us and, or, and encourage their members to register as voters. You know, these are very neutral things. Uh, it doesn't take, uh, you know, a pastor who uh, is very sophisticated sophisticated in his or her knowledge of um, uh, national politics to be able to do. So start with small steps like this uh, and then, uh, you know, you, I think, slowly have a situation where people are much more aware uh, of their rights as Malaysians uh, and this is, I think, uh, would be good for uh, nation building and also for citizenship uh, awareness uh, moving forward. I think that's very well put. Um, churches should not shy away from talking about nation building matters. Uh, I think the concern was people should not, I mean, they, they, people didn't want to go political. You know, they mm-hmm. don't talk about politics for from fear. the pulpit. But at the same time, yes, fear is one factor. But uh, I, I think really churches should have a, 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 a clearer stance on issues, not necessarily pro one party or another, but rather on issues that matter to the nation and to the people and, and to a certain extent to Christians as well, the Christian community. Mm. So, um, okay, talking about the sentiment of um, Christians, I mean, in, the, in parliament and in, in, in the leadership, how, how can we uh, be more, I don't know, inclusive or more strategic or more, um, I don't know, God-like, <laughs> you know, God-minded, God I mean, yeah. big, big picture-minded <coughs> In, in, in Malaysia, you know, uh, sh- because there were, straight after G14, there were a lot of calls saying that, hey, you should not be overly celebrating, you know, you shouldn't say God or this is God's hand or whatnot, because which is true, we, it's not something that we want to uh, lord over and say that it's because of our God, yeah. no, in, in that sense. But how do we approach this? How do we have this conversation? Uh, well, uh, I would, you know, maybe start from what you said just now. Uh, I think... Any faith community, uh, you know, uh, including let's say our Muslim brothers, would would uh, you know attribute uh, you know occurrences uh, around the world and also in Malaysia to uh, their own maker, mm. to their own uh, you know their own deity, uh, and you know my Muslim friends would say that you know uh, this is ditakdirkan uh, oleh Allah, this is uh, determined by God, and I don't think there should be any problems uh, with Christians to say that this is uh, you know consistent with our. Uh, understanding of uh, God's sovereignty, right? Um, uh, of course, uh, you know, the, the celebratory part, I think, should be uh, in respect of the Malaysian electorate as one that is uh, mature uh, and that uh, is one which, uh, you know, saw and supported a very peaceful transition of power. Uh, you know, so I, I think those are things which we should continue to uphold and, and work towards uh, and we should not be, be shy about it. Um where I think uh, we uh, perhaps uh, need more discernment again, like I said, uh, is uh, you know within uh, let's say the the, the leaders uh, of uh, any political party who are Christians. You know, we we need to firstly understand that even Christians can have uh, different opinions on yeah, different things. Yeah. Right. So uh, now the the hot topic uh, that's being debated a lot, especially in the the Chinese press, is uh, the issue of whether or not we should support the removal, complete removal of the death penalty, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, you know, I've had uh, discussions among uh, my Christian colleagues. Uh, you know, we, you know, have different views on this. Uh, so, you know, um, don't think that all Christians think alike on all things. Uh, on matters where we do have much more consensus on, uh, you know, for example, uh, on the issue of, uh, let's say, uh, using uh, the word Allah in the in the uh, BM Bibles. I think this is something that we see very clearly as a uh, uh, human right uh, that should be enjoyed by uh, our uh, BM speaking uh, Christian friends, especially from uh, East Malaysia. Uh, you know, the, the challenge would be how do we try to make sure that uh, these rights are respected? Uh, and, uh, and this involves a certain, uh, 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 how shall we say, uh, steps in which we can. Uh, reach out to those who are, you know, fearful of this issue, especially uh, among our Malay friends. Uh, but at the same time, also to, uh, you know, find ways in which we can protect this right uh, for, uh, you know, uh, those Christians who use uh, BM as their primary language. 
Yeah, so th- this is sort of like a process of uh, continued process of uh, uh, trying to work together, uh, you know, among both Christians as well as uh, non-Christian uh, MPs on uh, issues of uh, concern. Mm. All right. You talked about electoral maturity. We touched a little bit on that. Um, I'm just wondering whether, what practical ways can the church again help? in bringing up the level of maturity because not everybody is at the same level. I, I do know of young people now. You would assume that all young people would know, but some of them are just swept along in this wave of euphoria without quite understanding it. Mm. <coughs> um, I think some of the bigger churches are probably in a position whereby they can uh, organize seminars or activities uh, where these issues can be discussed, uh, where, where they can invite uh, either academics, politicians or uh, NGO reps who would be able to uh, create more awareness and also to be able to educate uh, Christians uh, on uh, various uh, areas of uh, uh, nation building, uh, including elections and politics. Uh, you know, I think uh, DUMC has been quite uh, in the forefront, you know, in terms of organizing events such as these. Uh, there have been other churches that have uh, organized similar events as well. I just attended one in uh, FGA in Jalan Kuchai Lama. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, to talk about nation building. So I think this is one way in which, uh, you know, you can uh, increase the level of awareness. Uh, other ways is would be, you know, through small group discussions. Uh, and you'll be surprised that there are actually many Christian um, leaders out there who are quite politically aware uh, and uh, who can probably give their own insights uh, and understanding, uh, you know, uh, to their own uh, church members as well on a more personal level. Uh, you know, so this is part and parcel of the larger debate uh, that, and discussion that we, we should be having. Uh, not everyone will be on the same page, but at least uh, in Malaysia Baru, we have the space now to discuss and debate much more compared to before. Mm. And that's something I think really, really we are so thankful for because um, people with opinions now can voice it out. Um, without openly, fear of fear. Without fear yeah. of fear, yeah, exactly. You can engage, you can have a discussion. You don't have to agree one person with another person to, to, to with everything. You can actually disagree. Mm-hmm. We don't have to see eye to eye to walk hand in hand. We don't have to have this same uh, uh, rigid way of, of doing things that, no, it, it, the conversation has been has been open. And we're so thankful for leaders like yourself uh, who have uh, really fought hard. And, <laughs> and, and, and now we are in this uh, uh, country where the climate is, uh, there's a bit, definitely more hope than yeah. before yes uh, you know new hope you know to echo a title of a movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we've got one big circle <laughs> yeah um for for uh those who are considering uh, uh, uh stepping into politics your advice for them uh dip your toe in first uh, to test out the waters uh you don't have to go and dive headlong into it uh, I think that would be the 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 the, the advice that I would give. Uh, I'm by nature someone who's more careful and considered. Uh, so you know, some people may be a bit more gung ho, uh, but I think for the larger, uh, you know, masses, uh, you know, politics is not necessarily for everyone. Uh, you know, by dipping your toe in it, you'll be able to firstly decide uh, on whether this is the right path for you. Secondly, uh, you know, you'll be able to find your own niche because, like I said earlier. Not everyone uh, can be a frontline politician or elected representative, but there are many ways that you can contribute, uh, either directly or indirectly. And then the third thing that I would say is that, uh, you know, uh, this is more for politicians who are already serving, uh, and uh, and also for for those uh, maybe aspiring to get into politics. Uh, politics as a career uh, is not lifelong for everyone. Uh, you know, with the the the, the exception of. Uh, a few individuals, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, you have to uh, see the, the uh, fact that, you know, your political uh, career uh, may be one that's limited, would usually be one that's limited. Uh, of course, the time span differs for each individual. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you have to move on to your next career. So. Maybe we end with this last question. What is your hopes and aspiration for the M- Malaysia moving forward? I mean, for maybe firstly, for Christians and for churches, in the level, of, in, in terms of maturing in this new Malaysia and also as a nation as a whole, your hopes? Um, <clears throat> actually, um, my my hopes for the church as well as for Malaysia is not really that different. Uh, so, for example, one thing that um, myself and my colleagues are working very hard towards is to encourage more young people to be politically aware and politically educated. Uh, and for some of them, uh, you know, I think we are trying to encourage them uh, to... 
uh, you know, join join the political process. Of course, we'd be much more happier if they join uh, my party. Uh, but doesn't matter, you know. I think in the larger scheme of things, if they find that they can contribute more in their own ways, in in a constructive ma- ma- manner, uh, in other parties, including uh, you know, in the now opposition parties, I, I think that would be good for the country as a whole. Uh, with the caveat that they should participate in a way that you know they can con- contribute constructively. Not just uh, you know go out and shout uh, uh, racist mm. uh, epithets and then uh, count that as a political career. You know we don't want that. Uh, so if we have more younger people who can be exposed to the political process and then take part in a more meaningful way, that would be good uh, for the entire uh, country. If let's say some of them happen to be Christians, uh, I think uh, you know we would uh, also find that to be encouraging. But like I said, uh, you have to come in with the right reasons. Yeah, and especially now since uh, PH is in power, there will be a lot of people who want to join the party for the wrong reasons. And uh, we want to make sure that we continue to have a culture within my party that, uh, you know, values, uh, principles and morals above all else. Mm. Sorry, following up with that, final, final question. <laughs> Words to those who are listening to this podcast outside of Malaysia. You came back from UK and from your yeah. studies to back to Malaysia to Seoul and back to the land. Mm-hmm. And also in your early interview, you, you did say that you are a reluctant mm-hmm. politician. Mm-hmm. What's your words to people who are considering coming back to Malaysia? But oh, there's one, there's hundred and one reasons not to. But maybe there's more reasons to come back. Uh, I will encourage all Malaysians who are currently not in Malaysia, uh, whether they are studying or working, to uh, evaluate how you can contribute uh, to the nation building process. Uh, I don't advocate for all Malaysians who are brought to come back because uh, I don't think we can provide you with enough jobs in the short term. Uh, but there are other ways that you can contribute. Uh, you know, you can come back, for example, uh, if you're an academic, to come back to do research collaborations with uh, uh, like-minded academics in the public or the private universities. If you're a businessman, you can explore uh, you know, new value-added uh, you know, business propositions in Malaysia. Uh, which does not have to depend on, uh, you know, chronistic connections. Uh, if you are um, uh, somebody who has already retired and then want to come back uh, to uh, maybe uh, spend time to give advice to the younger generation, you can do that as well. Uh, you know, and for students, uh, you know, as uh, those who are, uh, you know, currently studying, uh, I think this is one group of people whom I think uh, the country needs the most because you don't have uh, attachments in terms of... Uh, perhaps having uh, families already established abroad. Uh, you know, there are a lot of opportunities here in Malaysia right now. Uh, and I think that uh, this is something that I realized after traveling uh, and working in different uh, parts of the world. Uh, there's nothing like your own, own, own country. Uh, the grass may seem greener on the other side, but you'll find that in actual fact, you'll find issues of discrimination and also of, uh, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, obstacles that are put in your way uh, and also perhaps in the way of your children, uh, you know, in other countries. Uh, here in Malaysia, I think uh, we are, uh, like it or not, uh, we are we are uh, members of uh, the, the larger community here and we are given opportunities uh, that uh, we would not uh, otherwise be given if we are you know, outside Malaysia. So young people, come back and see how you can contribute to the nation-building process, whether it's in the private sector or in the public sector. Yeah. Malaysia needs you. Yeah. There's no place like home. <laughs> and that analogy you used is quite funny because I, I've heard you say that the, uh, the grass seems greener on the other side. Usually because the grass is fake. <laughs> <laughs> Upon closer infection, inspection, it's not real. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in Malaysia, most of the grass is real. So yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> with uh, baja and cows and... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's natural fertilizer, natural organic. Fertilizer. Yeah, that's, that's the unique thing about Malaysia. <laughs> yeah. And of course, the food. Mm. So, thank you so much for your time uh, and My sharing pleasure. here Thanks today. It's been delightful and insightful and really, the whatever you've shared, it's been uh, something that I think we can all take and we can all uh, look into ways as, as a Christian community, as churches, uh, to move forward and help together. Let's sow into Malaysia. We love Malaysia and we love our neighbours and we love uh, everyone, all Malaysians, right? Julia, do you love Malaysians? Totally. We're, we're not pro any party. We're just pro Malaysia. So everybody, you heard the situation, right? And you heard the call. Come home. Come home. Malaysia needs you. Yeah, maybe just end uh, with uh, a verse. Since you asked me to, to share a verse, uh, I would uh, always keep Romans 8.28 uh, close to my heart. Uh, in all things, God works for the uh, good of those who love Him, uh, who He has called according to His purpose. So... Uh, this is my purpose right now. I'm sure that uh, you know, the, your listeners will also find their purpose and find that God is working through them to achieve His purpose through them. Amen. You've been listening to YB Dr. Ong Kian Ming, uh, myself, Jason and Julia, and we are hoping and we are 
excited for the new Malaysia moving forward. God bless you everyone. See ya.
This segment features music from BWCC Worship. Do connect with us at facebook.com forward slash rema.rad.10. Comment, like and share our weekly show so that we can do more. Contact us at hello at rhemarad.io. We would love to hear from you. Listen to all past shows by searching Rema Radio on the following apps. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. This episode was edited, mixed, and recorded by Moses Chan at Prodeo Studio. Until our next show, know that you can play a role in building Malaysia. God bless. Hi, this is Jason, the station director of Rema Radio. I want to thank you for your support in making the ministry what it is today. Since our launch in 2016, we've consistently released two shows weekly. We've featured sermons and songs from churches and talents all across Malaysia. We've been privileged to have on our shows thought leaders from education, family, government, arts, media, business, and the church. Our mission field is the digital space. Our task is to create and curate content that is God-inspired and relevant to the world we live in today, to be a platform for kingdom unity, to be a resource center for the coming famine that is not of food and water, but of God's word. This is our assignment, and we have experienced the grace of God upon us to do this. So many testimonies have been birthed out of this ministry. We want to reach a wider audience and be a blessing to more, but we need your support. At the moment, Rema Radio is not backed by any one church, organization, or business. It is powered by volunteers. While I'm encouraged by the handful of supporters who has given, we need more partners. If you believe there is a need for positive, faith-inspired Malaysian content, why don't you consider partnering with us? Go to rema.rad.io forward slash support to find out more. Our prayer is that we connect with the right partners and together let's sow into the digital mission field and impact lives far and wide. God bless. I found it on Rima Radio.